Welcome to The Finish Line with So Very Easy. My name is Laura and today I want to make an I Spy quilt. It's going to be a little bit different than what most people think an I Spy quilt is. We are going to I Spy in bubbles. There is no piecing. We get to quilt it and piece it all at the same time. So we need to start with some fun children's prints and we're going to be able to quilt this either on a sit down machine, a long arm machine, or even our domestics. So for this particular I Spy quilt, we are going to piece it, quilt it, all at the same time. So we'll start off with some fun prints and our quilt already sandwiched together. I have my back fabric, my batting, and my top already basted together. I will be quilting this with some round rulers. So I will be using ruler work but you can use squares and use a walking foot on your machine if you'd like. So I've chosen three different circles that I'm going to use to quilt with. These circles are going to not only be my guide for quilting, but they're going to be my guide for cutting. When we do ruler work, we do need that special foot that goes on our machine. It is thicker so that we don't bounce over top onto the rulers. It also is a quarter inch from that center to the edge. So as I'm stitching around, the needle's not going around the edge. The needle is going a quarter inch from the edge. And that's going to make doing this quilt really easy. So with these three circles, I'm going to cut out circles for my I Spy quilt. And I'm going to use these circles to trace out the shapes that I need. For example, if I want to cut out this orange tractor, so I'll place that on and trace that circle and then cut that circle out. Now you can cut it out with regular scissors, but I'm going to use pinking shears. And I'm going to cut that out on the outside of that drawn line. So when I do use this quilting foot and I go around the inside of this shape, I will be stitching in a quarter inch all the way around this circle. If I use the outside as I'm stitching, there's nothing for me to stitch on. So I am going to use those inside measurements. If you have circles that do not have an opening for you to get into, we will need to cut out a larger circle so I would trace around that larger circle, cut that circle out, and once that circle is cut out, I'm going to use the smaller circle to stitch around. So I'll be able to stitch around and still be stitching on top of my little circles. If you're using squares, you can make just a pile of different squares. So I have used three sizes, the inside measurement, to the larger one, the inside of the medium one, and the inside of the smaller one. And I've cut just a variety of different circles that size. I've also cut a couple of half circles. This is all we're going to need to do the quilt top. We're going to glue baste these on top of that quilt sandwich. So I have that quilt ready to go, sandwiched together. I'm now going to place these dots, or these big circles, randomly on the quilt. So I have some large, some small, and some medium ones. So I'm just going to lay these all over the quilt. Some of these half circles I'll just tuck in underneath some other larger and smaller circles. It's just going to give some dimension. So I want to just keep putting these circles all over the top of my quilt. So the entire top are these cut out circles. I will now need to baste these down and I'm just going to use a child's school glue. We will only need such a very little bit because we just want to hold them down until we get the quilting done. I find the liquid is a little bit better than the glue stick because this does not leave a sticky residue for the needle. And it washes out. 
So I'm just putting a couple of dots all the way around and maybe one or two in the center. And pressing that back down. And I'm going to glue every single one of these dots down and then I need to let this dry. So I have three different sizes because I have three rulers. I have some half ones under full ones and I also have half ones along the edge. I know these are going to be cut off but I do want to fill the entire quilt. I will now go to my Q20 and I'm going to quilt this. But I will be using the circular rulers to do the quilting. I did do a video on how to do circle quilting. I'll put a link in the description. But what I will basically be doing is I'm going to put that template down. I'm going to quilt, stop, move the ruler, quilt, stop, and continuously move the ruler. When I get to a corner where I'm going to be able to do a new circle, if it's the same size circle, I could just put it right in that area, go all the way around, stop, and then come back out. And I'm going to be able to continue to do this. When I get to an area where I have a different size circle, I'm going to be able to remove that one template and put in the next and quilt around. Let me bring it to the quilting machine and I'll show you how this is all going to go together. So I have the machine set up for ruler work, which means I do have that larger foot. The circle that was cut out was this particular one, so I am going to be using that ruler. I'm going to place it down, then I'm going to quilt all the way around. This particular ruler does have an opening, so if I want to close that circle, I could just rotate it a bit and then finish stitching that circle. Once I've done that full circle, I can remove that. I'm not going to remove my needle. I'm going to continue making circular shapes. And to travel, I'm just going to use any circle. We can use the outside and go around, or we can go to the inside. I will be quilting the inside. I'm going to have that inside go right up against that foot. I can quilt another complete circle, or I can take it and stop where I come to the next circle. By stopping there, that means I'm going to be able to take that ruler, line it up, and do a complete circle. I make sure that I have that right ruler, or at least one smaller, and go all the way around. And just rotate that ruler a bit to fill in the gap. Now I can continue and make that original circle and I will be stitching right over top of this circle. Once you get going, you can situate this little opening in an area that you are not going to quilt. So I'm going to stitch around until I come to this circle. Find the right ruler and stitch around. I'm right back at the very beginning. I could take that ruler off, put the original one on, and continue that circle. But this time, I'm going to stop on that stitching line. Change rulers or keep the same ruler and stitch. 
I'd like to line up that template so I will be hitting another circle. And that way I'll be able to do that. Or you just bypass it. If you keep this ruler in the same spot, you could travel back if you need to, or you can change rulers until I hit the edge of this circle. So my circles are going to cross over. I've hit this top circle. I'm going to be able to work on that one and go around. To catch this little part of the circle, I can rotate that ruler until I get to that edge. Now I can finish that circle off. So the circles are going to go around, inside, outside. But when all of the quilting is done, this is going to look like a bunch of circles or a bunch of bubbles on top of each other. You're not going to notice if you've missed one edge. It will just look like it's under a bubble or a bubble's over top of it. Here's a part circle that looks like it's underneath another circle. So we do not need to do all of the circles complete. We do need to completely go around these shapes so that they don't fall off. And we can go over them, but we can do half shapes. This was almost a circle, but you can see I stopped and started at a line. What we're looking to do is stop and start in any stitching line. So the areas where there are no stitching just looks like spaces in between all of these bubbles. The sides we can do just half bubbles. This area is going to be cut off. So we have this fun bubbles and circles all over. These little edges are going to fray up in the wash. So they're going to be fun for little hands to touch. And they're going to turn into like little clouds. We do need to stitch a quarter inch in, but we can always leave bigger spaces if we would like. And when we look at the quilt in a hole, it has such a fun, fresh feeling. I did use a variegated thread just to add some more fun to the quilt. If you do not have round rulers, you can just glue on some circle shapes and then do an all over pattern. But you will need to make sure you get all edges of your shapes. This is definitely a fun I spy quilt to make. There was no piecing. We just needed to put those quilt layers together and then put on our I spy dots. And using those rulers as templates, not only for quilting, but for cutting, assures this goes together quick and easy. I do hope you've enjoyed today's episode on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and as always, come on back. Let's see what we're working on next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.